Good morning, Lompo. Good morning, Lompo. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's June 12th today, which is an important day. We'll talk a little bit more yeah. about it later, but today is um, Loving Day. So the, today commemorates the celebration of um, the Supreme Court banning states from ha having a law that outlaws interracial marriages so cool. um this is a really important day that we'll chat about a little bit later um but we had some fun updates to share right yeah just a, a quick local one there's uh, we're celebrating um the fact that there's been a transfer in ownership over at south side yes. coffee which is our favorite coffee place in the in the world if not lompoc for sure um so congratulations to um haley uh, and Hallie. Hallie. Haley, oh I'm my sorry, gosh. Hallie. Uh, and her mom, Heather, who just purchased uh, Southside Coffee from Stacy and Julie, I believe. Yep. And um, they're very excited. So um, excited to see what Hallie's going to do. She's got some new ideas and uh, she's very anxious to reopen. I and there's think so. Hallie on the right from her cheerleading days. She's Lompoc High come School. Come a long way. <laughs> so congratulations, you guys. And I think, if I read it correctly, they're hoping to open on June 22nd which is also Hallie's birthday. Yeah. So that should be exciting. So keep, make put that on your calendar. Yep. And don't forget to uh, support Southside there in um, downtown Old Town Lompo. Yeah. That's and we hope to chat Lompo. with Hallie a bit, little bit later, maybe next week. Yeah. We haven't reached out to her yet, but just would love to get some of her mm -hmm. thoughts. She's a young entrepreneur in town here in Lompo. So I'm really excited for her. So congratulations, congratulations Hallie. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. And then you found some fun nature clips, right? You know, so I, I can't get enough <laughs> nature. So I'm always surfing around and once in a while, uh, something will pop up and I'm like, oh, wow, I had no idea. So um, this is mama number 399 and she's got some really interesting history. And what is Mama number 399? Is she a grizzly bear? I believe she's a grizzly she's bear. She's a grizzly bear. And this is up in Yellowstone. Yeah. Uh, but she has four cubs. And I just thought that was pretty yeah. pretty amazing. And, and grizzly cool. bears in California, I know, used to be um, prevalent. Obviously, they're on our flag, but there's no more grizzlies in California. So this is a big deal. That's yeah. why we're talking about it. So let's see. We got that one. There might be a... Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they so cute? Uh, Look at those little men. Don't get too close. Or women. <laughs> All of them. Bear cubs. Well, we we love bears because we've had a bear in Lompoc now. Yes. So we we want to keep celebrating bears. We here. feel like we know all about bears now because we had a bear here in Lompoc. So, but this is a cute little video yeah. too. You found of these little bears. Somebody. Look how cute they are. Uh, oh I'm just my gonna gosh. pause and enjoy this. <laughs> Everyone, take a deep breath. This is your Friday. Yeah. <laughs> You can feel the nice, cool air in Yellowstone Park. Oh, gosh. Uh, anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. If you're curious about it, Google grizzly bear number 399 or Yellowstone grizzly bear 399. Yeah. And there's a pretty uh, awesome little story about that. So there's your moment of nature. Oh, I love that. I think I can look at like cat videos and animal videos all day, especially right now. <laughs> um, and then La Parisima, mm -hmm. right? You learned some interesting things. We yes, I have to pull that up here. Yeah. Let me get my notes. I that's the beautiful La Parisima mission. There. All of us locals, we we love going there. We love uh, walking around. We think we know everything about it because we I, live I here. I should add that my mom lives in Solving, and she's still never been to the La Parisima mission. So there are probably plenty of locals that need to go check it out that's so. inexcusable <laughs> um, but anyway so uh there's some uh, you know we walk around thinking oh this is an old place and some um, yep. interesting history but there's some details right here so uh let's see being the birthplace of father mariano uh de boris the, uh, he was born in the city of inca mallorca spain and it's the sister city of lompo yep. which is actually interesting and there's a street in that town called Lompoc, which i found pretty awesome um and let's see. So what's this join we, us in the Padres kitchen here? Yeah. So there's a, so actually, so let me, I got to finish the history. Okay. Well. That's okay. I'll we'll <laughs> go back to it. But here, check this out. Um, this, this guy, he, he was in the same position as Junipero Serra. Okay. And so when he was here, he was in charge of all the missions and he set up his headquarters at La Parisima because he loved that one the most. And he's actually buried 
there at, at La Parisma okay. Mission. That's so creepy. I found that pretty interesting. So <laughs> if you go on to the La Parisma uh, Mission Facebook page, there's tons of history and some really cool stuff that yeah. you can check out and learn a little bit more about that. So. <laughs> That's kind of a creepy story. Well, it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's like, I mean, this, it was in the 1700s that he was here. Okay. And it's, he's actually buried here. All right. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Well, I mean, for a dead guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then there was also some really cool stuff um, about South Korea, mm -hmm. right? And the Navajo Nation. Yep. So the Navajo Nation had one of the higher um, infection rates of yeah. the coronavirus. Really bad. Um, so this was kind of this was a little map there. Yeah. So this is the the Navajo Nation, and uh, let's see, they had. Uh, That's how many cases it was all broken 6, up in those areas. Cases plus, and um, what's what's fascinating about this story is South Korea. Um, got word of uh, the issues in the Navajo Nation, and they remembered that back in the Korean War, um, there were the code talkers, which were soldiers that were Navajo that would use the Navajo language to communicate, and the, the, the enemy could not figure out what they were saying. So anyway, the South Koreans uh, have shipped over, I think, 10,000 uh, PPE masks and a few other things, um, and just been so grateful and thankful um, for the history and the connection that South Korea and the Navajo Nation has. So I thought that was really cool and that's just awesome good news. So if you didn't know about some of this stuff, look up the Navajo Nation in South Korea. You'll find didn't you say there was a movie history. about this too? Yeah, that's the Code Talkers. Movie. Okay, yeah. so we'll have to check out that movie too. Yeah. So that's just an interesting different. story about two communities that you wouldn't think would ever be connected just yeah. knowing about each other. So yeah, I just, I think that for it being, you know, 50, 60 years yeah. for them to still um, honor that connection is just just amazing. Yeah. yeah cool. So today, like I said earlier, is June 12th. Mm -hmm. um, June 12th celebrates the Supreme Court obviously getting it together mm -hmm. and um, outlawing the states from allowing to have um, interracial marriage bans on the books, which just still seems nuts to me. And it all started with Mildred and Richard Loving, mm -hmm. um, who got married in 1958 in Washington, D.C., and they went back home to Virginia. And one night, a police officer um, bangs on their door, and they are being accused of illegal cohabitation. So yeah, they woke uh, up in bed with a police officer next to the bed. Uh, and they were arrested and yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, and about. and that was you know just over five decades ago that the same cream supreme court made that decision it took them 10 almost 10 years um for them to finally you know have everybody get it together this is a little clip from mildred loving i didn't realize how bad it was until we got married full of love themselves they didn't expect to find hate in others their home swarms with children, their own three, as well as neighborhood friends, who enjoy the warmth here. Mrs. Loving recalls how the ordeal began one night in 1958. The, the night we were arrested, mm -hmm. um, I guess it was about 2 a.m. And I saw this light, you know, and I woke up and it was the policeman standing beside the bed. <laughs> and he told us to get up. Maybe he was under arrest. You go ahead and play. And anyway, they carried us to Bowling Green and uh, locked us up. And in January, they had the trial. And they uh, told us to leave the state for 25 years. But the way I understood it, the lawyer said that we could come back to visit, you know, when we wanted to. So that Easter, we came back and they got us again. We had been down a few times before that, but at Easter we came down, they found that we was down, they arrested us again. Fascinating. I, so, I'm like, yeah. I was in shock. I mean, yeah. and it's been, it's a, been a, a holiday that's been celebrated um, for, I think, the last 30 years in different states mm -hmm. um, recognize it, including Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, get, I think it, it boggles my mind that that was just over five decades ago mm -hmm. so that's within uh, that's within our parents lifetime. parents yeah. lifetime uh, we have come a long way yeah. and the fact that we could even be considering that that was a that that was an issue just makes me mad so and she was so sweet about it I would be so there is uh, we only I only included a, a, a clip of the the larger interview but if you're curious um, just Google Mildred loving yeah and on YouTube yep. or YouTube um, and there's just there's a lot of history and some really interesting interviews and if you didn't know about this story 
um, hey, let's do our homework. Yeah. This is a really interesting story. And um, I think USA Today had an interesting little tidbit, mm-hmm. I guess. In 2015, um, one out of every six marriages was considered an interracial marriage. Mm-hmm. And um, that is five times higher than it was um, back in the 60s and before. So, mm-hmm. I, I yeah, we're making progress. We could still do better, but, um, but, but we're getting there. But it's good to know, it's good to, to put a marker and an anchor where history has said this happened. Yeah. And we should always, you know, reflect and try to measure where we are in society compared to, to the past. And yeah. obviously we have a long way to go in a lot of areas, yeah. but uh, we need to remember the successes and the changes that we've made so far. Too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we did get a chance to talk with Mayor Janelle Osborne yesterday. Uh, um, we had a really productive conversation. Mm-hmm. She wanted to um, touch a little bit about her thoughts on what's been happening and mm-hmm. kind of the state of the, the city. Um, so we'll go to her next and we will have Brad after that, Jolie. I promise Brad's coming very soon. <laughs> Brad's been on hiatus for a couple of weeks, I think. Yes. Uh, but uh, he's back with the splash, and um, I believe you're you're joining Brad for. I am. This one here. Yes, mm. in a different in a different fashion for sure. Yeah. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. Yes. So stick around for Brad at the end. Uh, he's uh, he's several of yours heroes. Yep. Or hero. Several. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Brad's here again, and um, yeah, it's good to see him, kind yep. of. So. So we wanted to talk to um, Janelle, to Mayor Janelle, and um, prior to they're having a city council meeting this coming Tuesday, mm-hmm. and um, their chief Mariani, um, who mm-hmm. is with the Lompoc PD here in town, he's going to be giving a presentation on what they've been doing um, to address many of the issues that everybody that's on everybody's mind um, in terms of police brutality and um, racial inequality um, and just the systemic racism that everybody's talking about. So um, so he's going to be doing that. So Janelle's kind of um, addressing some of these mm-hmm. topics, and um, we just wanted to spend a few minutes with her. So here is Janelle. So I want to first thank our local activists for organizing and being such a role model for what a peaceful protest is, really embracing their First Amendment right. And the time of a pandemic, they wore their masks and they really were supportive of each other and really asked the participants to be um, respectful. And I want everyone to take pride in their community because of how professional those protests reflected on our community, that everyone expects less of us and we continue to show them that we are so much more, even in a time of unrest. The second part to it is that This is an important issue and you have to look at it locally. And I really do want um, all the activists to get more engaged. Let's look at it at our level. I get that this is um, global. There are countries still experiencing this. The US still has it. We have over 400 years of history that is hard to correct. The last 50 years haven't corrected it. Um, So we still have work to do, but let's drill down to what needs to be done at the local level what's already been done. Where are we, not just with our police department, but with all of our local government and hiring practices and really begin to understand um, where we've improved, where we still need to improve, and what we can do locally. So much of this will need to be changed at a legislative level that is above and beyond the county, the state, or the federal. So while we might be able to put a proclamation in place or we might put a policy in place. We will still need um, larger changes at different levels where we as a community really are only the advocates up. We have a police chief who is a person of color, who has fought systemic racism within a very large police department, um, the LAPD, during a time when it was at its most volatile and having to deal with the fallout of it all. And so he has a huge amount of experience. The second part to that is he's been here and came here um, to help address ongoing issues that we had with our department. When he was hired, we had numerous issues internally and externally, and one of the, the reasons for his recruitment and his hiring was his experience in addressing those very specific kinds of issues of structural problems, uh, cultural problems, and policy issues. Asking for a defund of our police department isn't something we can do because we've already had a cycle of defunding. 
Secondly, there is no additional revenue to refocus and support um, other ways of addressing these issues rather than always putting it in the lap of our police department. I think our greater ill as a society whole, across the board has been to say our police department has to solve all our social problems. And so instead of just focusing on law enforcement and the most egregious of crimes, we've asked them to deal with the homeless situation. We've asked them to deal with domestic violence. We've asked them to deal with mental health issues. And they're not equipped, nor do we fund, nor do we have the partnerships that are always as supportive as I'd like them to be. We don't control the court system, that's at the county level. The public health and mental health and homeless technically comes in at the county level. Those are the departments responsible for those two areas. So our law enforcement gets tasked with responding to a call that ends up being a mental health issue and yet there's not enough social workers at the county level to respond at the same time so that it can be handed off to the person who has the skill set for addressing a mental health. So we are truly already in a scenario that many communities are asking uh, for the defund to happen so that the highest risk crime and the most egregious are what's f***ed on. We have literally already been there for a year and a half. So yes, ultimately you can have both. The need to address systemic racism and a support for your local police department and understand that they aren't gonna be able to solve all of the issues that are systemic racism. So it's really important that we all take the next step, that all of these activists who want to participate in this and want to identify their concerns come to the table. And for us to sit down together and look at the policies, the practices, the changes, the implementations, where it's slipping through the cracks, where we don't have the funding and work together to have that solution so that it is systemic and it is sustainable and that Lompoc can once again show how unique it is in its ability to um, both be at its best and be an example for others and it's our moment to shine and show that we can have a communicate have a conversation that we can have a conversation about a really difficult topic in a really respectful way and come to a solution and steps that are truly attainable. And I look forward to that discussion. Thank you so much, Janelle. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. Definitely appreciate you and yeah. what you have to say, so. It's have been some very challenging times. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, she's uh, worked hard to bring some folks together yeah. and uh, bring, bring more people into the process of government. Yeah. And um, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important to remember Lompoc did change to districts mm -hmm. here. So there's five districts. And so they're all four districts. Four yeah. districts I'm yeah. sorry. Four districts. And they're, I'm sorry, I've been up late. Um, and they're all meant to represent that community, that demographic. Mm -hmm. So if you want change, you know, consider running mm -hmm. for your district. So if you, if you think needs to, things need to turn around um, or you, it needs to be represented diff differently, um, stand up or get involved or find out what's going on. Go to the city council meeting this mm -hmm. Tuesday. Um, um, Chief Mariani will be giving a presentation on what the Lompoc PD has mm -hmm. been doing and plans to do to address many of the issues. Um, I know one of the things that was going around was um, a petition to turn on the body cameras because that um, currently they just have to wear them. Um, but I found out that they, we don't even have body cameras in Lompoc because we were never able to afford them. Um, so things like that was just but yeah. But ultimately, Surprising. No knowledge so, is yeah. power, and we, you know, the community as it. Um, tries to grapple and deal with some of these issues, uh, you know, educating ourselves on how things work or what has already happened or yeah. what still needs to happen. That's an ongoing process that will probably never arrive at the finish line, but try to be involved yep. if you can. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, enough of our soapbox here, right? Um, so. We have some fun, uh, so had some fun time with Brad. Um, we wanted to work on doing something for summer that was also non-alcoholic mm. um, because we've been, I think it's safe to say that many of us have been drinking too much and um, we wanted to find an alternative that maybe still goes well with food and uh, have a little fun with it and enjoy a uh, and non-alcoholic fruit-based beverage. So and it's good to have Brad back, I yes. must admit. Thank you so, so much, Brad. Thank so you, here Brad. you go, Jolie. Hi there, Brad, AKA my favorite bartender. It is so good to be here with you. It has been some time. 
I too have missed you. And you, Jolie. Today we're going to do something just a little different. I'm not going to drink. Thank you very much. Just kidding. Today we're going to make something called a shrub. Well, what is a shrub? Well, here to tell us all about that is the magnificent Michelle. A shrub is a fruit-based vinegar drink. It's also known as a switchel. It's tart and sweet and inebriation-free, though gin is also optional. And no, I don't want no shrubs. Wait, no, except I do. <laughs> I do want shrubs, so let's do this, Brad. So this shrub, yeah. tell us a little more about it. Well, so shrubs have actually been enjoyed for centuries. It was a way to preserve fresh fruit from going bad in the summertime. So they would take plump ripe fruit, they would add sugar to that, and there would go through a brief fermentation process, like anywhere from one day to a week. And then that syrup would be strained and then vinegar added in order to fortify this shrub. And then it would stay good in the refrigerator for up to a year. And you can use any combination of fruit that your little heart desires. You can even add fresh herbs or spices. So pineapple ginger would be delicious, um, cloves and blackberries. It's really up to you. In this case, we're just going to take stone fruit and do a really simple shrub. And I have a combination of some apricots, some white peaches, and some plums. Well, that sounds amazing. So what's our first step? So we're using a simple ratio, a pound of chopped fruit. In this case, I have a combination of plums, nectarines, apricots, and white peaches. And we're gonna chop those up, skin and all. And after that, we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar over the top. I'm using about a cup of sugar or just under. You can also do this part to taste. Then I'm just going to gently mash the mixture. Hey. Gently, Brad, come on. And then cover it with saran wrap and leave it out for one to three days so that it ferments just a tad. So now we're going to strain out that syrup. Get all those juices out, Brad, get them all out. Come on, Brad, get all those juices out. More muscle, Brad, more muscle. Yep, now we've got our syrup. Now we just need to add our vinegar. So in this case, we're gonna use apple cider vinegar, which is pretty mild. I always do the vinegar to taste too. So we'll do about a cup of the vinegar. Let's add like half of it first and then taste it. What do you think? Yeah? All right, then just throw it all in. Now, that vinegar flavor is going to continue to meld in the shrub as time goes by, and it'll get a lot more mild. Maybe at first it's going to taste pretty tart, but that sweet and sour combination is going to make you salivate and make you want food. And this is a healthy way to make your own soda. Just take a splash of this and seltzer water. You can also add a little bit of vodka if it's after five or before, it's up to you. We're not gonna do that today, Michelle. Keeping it light. <sighs> you and Brad looked like you had a great time. <laughs> we did. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. Um, so that was different yeah i was were, channeling i was channeling my tlc um left eye i couldn't i i couldn't get the whole outfit in but i was kind of trying to go there with the hair I, I don't think it totally worked out but if you guys are a fan of this new look we'll be bringing <laughs> back michelle i i have to say and maybe you all might agree with me but i think i think michelle stole brad's thunder which is a rarity i don't he, know about that uh, i think you took that one so <laughs> I mean, he, he couldn't even talk. He was um, speechless. I so. did take over the talking for that one, yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, shrubs aren't really hard to make. And if you're, you're what is that? Um, just imagine making a healthier soda. It's basically a sweet I already sweet said what it was. Know, but it's a sweet now syrup. Now you want to talk. <laughs> you, can, you, can, uh, you can do it yourself. If you need to put a little bit of Jenner vodka in there, don't yeah. tell anybody. Um, it's clear liquid, so you'd probably be fine. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's so it's so easy to make right now. And obviously, mm -hmm. there's so many different summer fruits out there. Yeah. So you're, 
you know, the world is your oyster mm-hmm. when it comes and, to making we shrubs. Used, um, stone fruits that we we grabbed a couple big bags of stone fruit out at the Route One Farmers yes. Market. Yes, so go there this weekend, Every this Sunday. Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, there were also some, I believe, over at Dare to Dream Farms, and then we've got our little um, Campbell Farm stand. Yep. Um, they always have yep. great strawberries, strawberries yeah. and blackberries mm-hmm. and all that. So plenty yeah. of fruit to choose from. All right, so uh, there you go. So you, now you have a project for the weekend. Yep. Uh, we're going to take the weekend. We're going to do a couple of interviews. We've got some exciting stuff coming up for next week. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be talking with Ashley Costa about the uh, Lompoc Valley uh, Health Organization, that yep. uh, community health yep. organization that she runs and the good impacts that they're doing uh, throughout the community. And then uh, we're going to talk to Vicky, Vicky Anderson. Mm-hmm. And Anne as well. And Anne as well. Uh, two from of the Lompoc the, Arts Society. Yeah. Yep. And they're in charge of not only painting a lot of the murals here, but um, keeping them yep. um, keeping the upkeep. Them up. yep. And they have some amazing stories. So we're going to go on a little walking tour with them this weekend. And, and learn a little bit more about the yeah. history behind each of these murals. And we'll uh, share that with you on Monday. Yeah. So, so this is this is Vicki. Uh, and there's Anne. So we'll chat with them. Yeah. So look forward to that on Monday. We're yeah. going to be talking about that. Yeah. It should be really fun. Yeah. So thank you all for watching. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. Yes. Have a wonderful weekend. If you're wondering what that drone shot was from earlier, and then I think also in, in your yes. moment of Zen here, um, that was the gorgeous Halama Beach, which is That's right. amazing. We snuck out. We snuck mm-hmm. out um, on a Tuesday. Played a little hooky on Tuesday because mm-hmm. it was so hot. We had to get out of the house. I think we got there at about a little after two o'clock. Yeah. And we didn't leave until 8 30. That place is gorgeous. And yeah. they just, th- that Halama burger. Uh, I had a chicken lettuce wrap chicken burger. Don't do that to yourself. Just, yeah, just have get the, the halama, halama burger. burger. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for thank watching. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being have with us. Have a great us. weekend. And here is your moment of zen.